In this presentation, we will enter an invoice for a custom order for which we had created a purchase order for and sent to the vendor and have now received the merchandise from the vendor and have made payment for now linking the invoice to that process, to the purchase order, to the payment that has been made to the vendor for that purchase order in QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the home page. We've got the open windows open. You can open the open windows, go into the view tab and the open windows lists. What we have done now, you can imagine this process is we had someone come into the store. Someone comes into the store and they want a custom guitar. We sell guitars. We don't have that particular guitar or that particular color. And therefore we are going to order the guitar specifically for this individual or this store or this company, whoever, whatever the custom order may be. Then we're going to go to our vendor who we purchase from, send a purchase order to them. Now this is assuming that we buy and we sell, we give the purchase order before we make the payment. If we make the payment at the point in time that we request the inventory, then we wouldn't use a purchase order because we would be paying at that point in time. The purchase order is a form that would indicate that we're not paying anything at the point in time we, we request and uh, we, we would like to be shipped the inventory and then we'll check it out and then make payment. So if we select the purchase order up top and we look for the purchase order that we're, we're linking to, if we go back and back, I'm using the back arrows, this is the customer uh, that we're going to be linking to. We're going to be invoicing this customer. So we created this purchase order for the customer and asked Epiphone to give us a guitar, an Epiphone Les Paul, a custom guitar for this particular customer uh, within the purchase order. Now this data here for the customer doesn't add anything for Epiphone. Epiphone doesn't care who our customer is, but it does add something for us. Uh, well, typically they wouldn't. It does add something for our system because it allows us to go through the system and track this customer as we go and help us to populate our forms. So if we close this out, We'll then say what happened then we could have received it here and it had the bill, but we went right to the write a check. So we wrote a check then. And if I go back to find this check, so we, we wrote it to uh, Epiphone. So here's the check we wrote. And again, we're referencing the customer for that check for this item. So it's flowing through to that transaction. Now it should flow through to when we actually build the client. So we're going to close this out. And we can imagine, okay, we're going to call the client and say, you know, we've got, we've got the guitar. We're going to ship it to you now. Now they could, if they come into the store, then we would create a sales receipt and they would, if they paid us at the point in time, then we'd give the guitar and pay them. If we're going to ship it to them and receive money in the future, which is what we're imagining here, we're going to, we're going to ship the guitar with a bill on it, the invoice. And uh, then we we're going to use the create an invoice. So we got the guitar for this customer and now we're creating an invoice related to it so we'll create the invoice and then we're going to say it's for eric music so if i drop down there's the eric music or we could start typing in eric music tab and again it's going to say the customer or job you selected has outstanding billable time uh, and or costs select the outstanding billable time or cost we're going to say yeah that's what we want to do we want to select the outstanding billable time or cost so we're going to say uh, yes and okay and so now this is a little confusing because it, you you go here and you say hey there's nothing there but you, there's going to be a few tabs here so if we look at these tabs time would indicate that we we charge billable time that we allocated to them uh expenses would be that we we charge in our expense categories we a billable expense mileage would be that we're tracking mileage and attend but we can see that there's one item in the items, which is an inventory item. So here is what we want. We're going to check this item. It's an ELP Epiphone Les Paul, one of them, $500, amount $500. That's what we want to invoice for. We're going to send this invoice to the customer for that amount. We're going to say, okay. So there we have it. The ELP, one of them populates automatically for us. If we tab through this, then we're going to say that the date is uh, 125. We'll keep that invoice should populate automatically bill to we can either email it or send it if we if we send it we should have the address which would populate if we had 
enter the full address into the customer. PO, we're going to keep that uh, same. The net purchase, let's say net 30. We expect to be paid in 30 days. And then the item is automatically populated for us. It's drawing it from the purchase order that we then paid for, picking up this information for us along the way. So this all happened from first us entering this into the items and then using that item for the purchase order, which we then linked when we made the payment uh, so that we can record it in our system. Now we're, we are invoicing uh, the client for this item. This invoice then, what's it going to do journal entry wise? Increase accounts receivable because we expect to get paid asset. It's going to increase that by the full amount 525 plus the sales tax. It's going to increase sales, but only increase sales by the 500. The difference of 25 is going to increase the payable account, sales tax payable that we owe to the state. It's also going to increase cost of goods sold, the expense account for the amount that's not on here, but is shown in the items list, and decrease inventory for the cost of the inventory that we're selling. It's also going to track this information, of course, in the subsidiary ledger by inventory item. So let's go ahead and save and close this and see if that does indeed do what we would expect it to do. Now, note I marked it to be emailed. So that's kind of the default. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close this and uncheck that because it's the practice problem. <laughs> so we're going to say save and close. Uh, you've changed er, terms. We're going to keep the terms and say yes. Okay, let's go to reports up top. Let's go to the reports. Let's go to company and financials balance sheet. Start there and change the date. I'm going to change the range up here for the customized reports. Change the range from 010119 to 123119, January 1st, uh, 2019 to 1231, 2019. Okay. And then the accounts receivable here, that should be going up. So let's double check that, double click that. And here we have it. Here's Eric Music, double clicking there, goes up. 525 for the entire amount. The other side, closing this back out, closing this back out, should be on the income statement, profit and loss, at reports, company and financial, profit and loss, changing the dates, 010119 to 123119. It should be up here in the merchandise sales, double clicking on that. We see it here. But it's only for 500. Double clicking on this, we see it's for this amount, not the full amount. $25 not included because we don't get to keep it. Even though we collect it, it needs to be paid to the state, which is a liability. Closing this out, closing this out, back to the balance sheet. That liability will be recorded in the liability section in sales tax payable. There's sales tax payable. Double clicking that item. We'll see there's the 25, I believe it's this one. Double clicking that. We can see uh, that we have this invoices for that 25. Closing that out. Closing that out. We also have the decrease in inventory. So the inventory should be up here. It being decreased, if we double click on that, inventory is going down by the 400. An amount we don't even see if we double click on the invoice, it being driven by the item list. So if we found the item, we can then look at what the cost would be. It's not going to be listed on the invoice because we don't want it to be given to the customer. Closing this back out and this, the other side of that is on the profit and loss. It's going to be in the cost of goods sold. Double clicking the cost of goods sold, we see. The other side, here's the 400, double clicking that, and it's not on here, but it's the 400 related to this form. Closing this out, closing this out, we see the net effect would increase income by the sales price, decrease in net income by the cost of goods sold, and the net between the two would, would be the effect on the gross profit and cost of goods sold. The other two reports, if we go back to the balance sheet, would be this accounts receivable, uh, 1354, we go to reports, customers and receivables, and we go to the customer balance detail. And we'll see that 1354 here, Eric Music now owes us the 525. 
The other report affected, going back to the balance sheet, is inventory. Inventory is here, 2542. If we go to reports, if we go to, to uh, the inventory and go to inventory valuation summary and change the date to 123119, we then see that detail 2542, it broken out by inventory item. And that should back the 2542 back to the balance sheet should match the 2542 here. Okay, so let's try that again. We're going to go back to the home tab. And so we're going to create another purchase order. That purchase order being, I mean, we're going to create another invoice. That invoice being linked to a purchase order. The purchase order up here, if we select that and go back, we're linking it to the purchase order, this one, for music store stuff. So we, we're now creating an invoice related to this purchase order that we made and labeled the customer for custom order for music store stuff. This company came in, asked for this guitar. We said, we'll order it for you. We closed this. We then received it from the vendor and paid for it with a check. So if we go to the check and go back, here's the music store stuff. So that's the check that we paid for this Gibson guitar we now have. Now we're going to, we're going to ship it to the client and say, Hey, we got your guitar. We're going to ship it to you. I just closed that out. We're going to ship it to you and we're going to give you a, uh, uh, an invoice for it and expect to be receive uh, payment in the mail. To create the invoice, we'll select the invoice. We're going to select the customer and we could do that with a drop down or just type in music store stuff tab. And it gives us this default again. It says, Hey, there's something there that could link to this item. So we're going to say, okay, let's find it. Again, it goes to time. We want to be over here in items, those being inventory items. We're going to select that and we're going to check off this item. That's the one we want. That's the guitar we got, the Gibson uh, SB. So we're going to say, okay. So then it populates for us, tapping through, dates the same. That's what we want. Uh, invoice numbers automatically. Bill, that's correct, although we might need the address if we're going to send it. If we're going to email it, we could email it. I'm going to uncheck that now for the practice problem. And then tab through the terms. I'm going to put on net 30. That's when we expect to be paid. Item populates automatically because it's populated from what we filled out on the purchase order. And that was what we filled out in the items list. Quantity, description, all being pulled through automatically. 770, 740, it's our more expensive model that we have. $38 sales tax, 816 is the amount we expect to receive. So again, let's record this and, and take a look at our reports one more time. So we're gonna go save and close. And, uh, and we're gonna say, yeah, save that. We're gonna go back to the balance sheet. Again, we expect the accounts receivable to go up. So I'm gonna double click on the accounts receivable and there's music store stuff. There's the invoice double clicking in on it. There it is. The amount for the full amount, 816. That's the amount we expect to receive in the mail. Closing that, going to the profit and loss report. Profit and loss. Other side should be in merchandise sales, income, revenue. Double clicking that. There it is, but it's only 777. Double clicking that. We see that that's the sales price, not including the sales tax. Sales tax is going to be something we collect, but owe to the state. So we'll close this back out. Close it up here. Close this. That could be found on the balance sheet. Balance sheet. We're going to go down to the liability section. Sales tax payable. There's the sales tax payable. Double clicking that. Last item, there's the 3887. Double clicking that. There's the, the, the invoice again. Closing this back out, closing this back out. It's also going to decrease inventory, assets, inventory, inventory, double clicking that. There's our Gibson 598, double clicking that. There is no 590. Oh, wait a sec. Was it a Gibson we had? Yeah. There is no 598 here because uh, it's not on the invoice, although it is driven. Where could we find that number? If we went to lists items, we could find it. 
So I'm going to close this back out. The other side of that is the cost of goods sold, the expense related to us selling this, closing this. Back to the profit and loss. Cost of goods sold is the expense of us giving the guitar. The cost of the guitar, cost of goods. And that's going to be music store stuff, 598 Again, not on the form, but this is the form generating it. If we close this out, now notice that if you go to see history, you can get some detail in terms of, of uh, the invoice, when, when the invoice was created, and you can track it, basically when you sent it, when you viewed it, and paid it. So this is a newer feature uh, within QuickBooks. I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to close this back out. And then the other report, if we go to the balance sheet, we can support the accounts receivable. 2170 should be represented by the customer balance detail. 2170, we now invoiced music store stuff for that 816. Then we can support the balance sheet, going back to the balance sheet, the inventory, 1944, should be supported by the inventory valuation summary. 1944 in the in the asset value the cost not the retail that's what we plan to sell it for this is what we bought it for for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info